All right. Welcome back to the show. I am always excited to start my week with you. Thank you for being here. I know there's always other things you could be doing, but yet you chose to spend this time with me. And for that, I'm so grateful. And I am so glad to have the opportunity to talk to you every week about so many things that I think can make our lives better. And I know we talk about a lot of things that can help us with our self-awareness and things that can help us in our business, our personal lives, our goals. And there's one tool that I refer to often, yet I haven't ever really dedicated an entire episode to, and that is a journal. So I want to talk a little bit about why journaling can be such a big part of your life and why it can help you and what you can use your journal for. And honestly, it's your journal, so you can use it for anything you want. But, you know, journaling is a useful tool and has many purposes. It could be a place where you write down your goals. And in that journal, you could stay accountable to what your um, actions are as you track the progress towards your goals. And it could be goals in your business or career. It could be personal goals, weight loss goals, financial goals, whatever you want. You can also use your journal as a way to just process feelings and emotions. And it can be a really healthy way for you to lay it out on paper, or perhaps you might use a journal app and you'll be able to download and get things out of your head, out of your heart. And that can help you develop a lot of strategies for managing those emotions. So I think when we can write about our feelings, it helps us understand them. It helps us get some clarity around it. We might even find that we can formulate some questions from that. And I think that it can be really helpful to regulate our emotions which then can help us relieve stress, right? So that's another great way to use a journal. A journal could be a way for you to decompress. It could be a way for you to talk it out with your journal. And that in itself can be a, a really powerful way to elevate your mood. And just getting it out is so cathartic because when we hold on to those thoughts, our thoughts really do create our feelings and our feelings create our thoughts. So it's really, I think, powerful when you can just get it out and put it on some paper. Another way that you can use a journal is you can use it as your creativity journal. You can use it for just free flow writing and imagination on anything you want. It could be downloading thoughts and ideas that are very creative in nature about the things you want to do and accomplish. And it could also just be some fantasy. It could be something fun. It, it might even become the outline or the sketch of a book. So if you want to write about, I don't know, a princess in a, a faraway land, no problem. You can use your journal to do that. And I think that can be a way that you actually stimulate and grow your imagination and become even more creative. Another great use for your journal is for it to capture memories. It could be a place that you talk about what happened in your day. It could be a day that you spent with family or a friend. It could be a romantic day. It could be a journal around your vacations. And so when you are able to capture those memories, you're able to look back on them and be able to share those experiences if you choose with other people. And I think that can boost our brain's capacity and cognitive processing ability too, because we're always reflecting and then looking back on those memories. So look, there's a million things you could put in a journal. And if you want, you could have a different journal for each one of those different ideas. So I want to encourage journal writing because you don't have to be someone who really likes to write a lot. It doesn't even have to be anything that you share with another person. So no one's going to judge what's in your journal. No one's going to judge your grammar. You can just write whatever comes out. And I think that the benefits of keeping a journal are endless. And what inspired me to share some of this with you 
Two things. One is because I came across an article in a magazine and yeah, I do read magazines, like real magazines that still come in the mail to me. I know that is not uh, as popular as it once was, but I love magazines. I love reading short stories and articles and especially when the magazine has content that is relevant to me. So one of the magazines that I subscribe to just to be able to give credit where credit is due and cite the source is Oprah's Magazine. I do love that. I'm sure it doesn't come as a surprise to a lot of you. And in this particular edition, which was an older one, because sometimes I don't get to read them when they come in, but I do save them. And that's sometimes what I throw out in a beach bag or when I want to sit outside uh, and enjoy some nice weather, which is exactly what happened last weekend when I came across this article. And it's by Amy Shern in uh, Oprah's Daily Magazine. And she shared nine things to write down before New Year's. And this is a very short one-page little uh, article about nine things that you should want to capture and hold on to and reflect on what was good in the year, which is great. Nine things to write down before New Year's. And I think that this inspired me to want to talk a little bit more about journaling because why wait till the end of the year? This is, I think, a good template for some things that you could journal about. And so number one on the list was to write about that one really great day. That one really great day in her article that happened in the year, this certainly is something that you could do every week, every month, is to reflect on what was that one really good day? Because Lord knows there's enough days that are not so great, right? But we don't want to focus on that. We want to capture the moments or the events that were really meaningful, that were really exciting, that brought us joy. So if you want to use this as a journal prompt, perhaps you want to use it weekly. When you look back on your week on Sunday, what day sticks out to you and why? So I loved that question. The second question was the mistake you never want to make. Interesting, right? The mistake you never want to make. So if you look back, and realize something that either you could have done better or you reflect on something you've seen in action or learned about that maybe someone else has experienced and you realize that is not something that you ever want to experience. You don't want to be put in that same position. You may find that gives you some perspective on decision-making. It might give you some perspective in how to overcome objections, conflict, how to navigate those things when they happen. So the mistake you never want to make, and perhaps you look at that in different areas of your life, the mistake you never want to make at work. And just putting it down in writing could help you avoid that pitfall in the future. Maybe it's the mistake you never want to make in your relationships the mistake you never want to make with your children, right? Whatever it is that would help you avoid a bad decision. Interesting. Okay, here's another one I'm going to pull out of the list. The go-to recipe. So again, this is something that I know we have recipes available to us at the touch of a finger, right? We can go on our phone and I can look up anything from apple strudel to... I don't even know, right, to making some Mediterranean dish. I recognize that information is widely available through the internet. However, there's something about looking at a recipe in someone's handwriting. And I know some people who have recipes saved that were written out by their mom or their grandma. And that's so special. So is there a particular recipe, or perhaps there's more than one, that is really an important part of your family's culture or history that you want to write down in a notebook so that when you take it out, it's done, it's written out, it's not something you're looking at on a screen, and you could share that with someone else in your family. 
Another benefit is that there are several recipes that all get passed down from one generation to another that even though you might find something similar online, it's just really unique to your family because it was the way that Aunt Cindy made it and you want to be able to do the same. So having those things in a notebook somewhere could be really important to you. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, let's go on to a couple of others. This is so cool. If you could take a journal and write out every week or month a tiny promise you want to make with yourself, a tiny promise that you want to make with yourself that really would be very meaningful. Now, it could be something as simple as I choose not to do X when the temperature gets above 90 degrees because I'm not going to torture myself. But it could also be very meaningful, like I'm not going to let someone take advantage of my niceness. I'm going to use no as a complete sentence, or I promise to love myself above all else, or I promise that I will always do my best. Whatever it is, if you could keep a notebook of tiny promises you want to make to yourself, how awesome would it be? So you could use that particular exercise as something you want to do daily. Maybe you want to incorporate this as a morning ritual, as something you do every day, where you set out with an intention and you set out with a promise that you want to make with yourself for yourself each day. It could be something, like I said, very small or something very profound about the way you want to show up in the world or how you want to honor yourself. And I thought that was great. Last one, that one quote is on her list, that one quote, the one, the perfect one that you love, that is a mantra for your life. Maybe it's a poem, maybe it's a quote, maybe it's a prayer or a piece of scripture. And maybe it's not just one. Maybe those are the things you want to keep in your journal so that you have a place to go back to when you want some wisdom or inspiration. Maybe you find things as you even scroll online that you want to capture. And so you can take a screenshot and then write it in your journal later. And don't just stop with one. Like I said, keep a record of all these positive, inspiring and meaningful words, quotes, saying scripture that you want to be able to keep in one place. And I will also say that you can have any and all of this in one journal too, if you want. It's your book. It's your opportunity to capture something and put it in writing. And I have to say, I believe that there's power in the pen. So while I do love technology and I use it all the time, I think that there's still such a profound sense of connection when I sit down with paper and pen. And so I encourage you, go buy a pretty notebook. Go find something that you'll want to get into every day. And if you want to really incorporate this into your routine, make a ritual around it. Build it into a, a certain part of your day. So maybe it is in the morning or maybe it's at night. Find a place in your house that you'll want to go to, something that you'll look forward to. So if it's the big comfy chair in your bedroom, do that with a cup of tea or do that in the morning with your coffee and really just create space. And it could only be for 10 minutes. It doesn't have to take a lot of time, but create space in your day to really connect with journal writing. And maybe there is no intention when you sit down with your paper and pen. Maybe it's just gonna come to you that at that point, at that time. So explore the different ways you can journal. And I know I gave you a lot at the top of the episode. Just to review, it could be, again, a stream of consciousness writing, that you write down your thoughts as they happen. There's nothing planned. You don't judge what comes out. And even if the words or the thoughts don't make sense, you just write it down and see what starts to come to shape from that. It could be a dream journal. That's something I didn't mention. A dream journal. I, I really wish I had kept a dream journal my whole life because I had some wild dreams, guys. I'm sure a lot of you do. 
I feel like most nights I, I'm like in a movie and I can remember a lot of my dreams, but if I had a dream journal, that would be probably really cool. And that could be a great way for you to really get in touch with your subconscious and see if there are any patterns in your dreams as well. So I hope that this has inspired you. I trust that you found something here that you want to really jump into, whether again, it could be the gratitude journal. We've talked about that before. Could be a summary of the highlights of your day. It could be a journal around food and recipes. It could be the journal that you keep of all the positive quotes and inspiring thoughts and scripture. Whatever it is, I know that it could really be a positive part of your day. And I think it's a great way for you to boost your mojo. It was the perfect conversation for us to have today. And I, again, appreciate you being here so much. So thank you again. If you found this to be a, a fun episode, share it with someone else. I appreciate that. I also want to ask that you follow and download this podcast so we can continue to provide great content. Please go and give it a five-star rating. And all of that means the world to me and helps us to continue to deliver some really good stuff every week. So thanks again, and I will see you next week.